Hey everybody, Tina Campbell, the New York Regional Partner of Master Networks. So we are a national networking organization and we're trying to help people and especially entrepreneurs and business uh, leaders to grow and to pivot during this time um, that's difficult. And even beyond that, because many of, of these lunch and learns that we're doing really can, I think, can uh, stand the test of time, especially if we're transitioning to our new norm. Uh, so I'm really happy today because I have a really good friend of mine that we're going to be speaking to, and that's Kathleen Troy. Hi, Kathleen. Hi. Thank Hi. you. And uh, she's going to be talking about healthy priorities in times of radical challenges. So welcome. And you know, tell us about yourself and then tell me about these um, healthy priorities. Okay. You know so again, I'm Kathleen Troy and I live in Connecticut and I have been a hair colorist for 30 years. I was born and bred in Michigan. I moved to New York. It was one of the biggest uh, challenges and exciting things I ever did for myself. I followed my sister. And I got involved in the beauty industry for 30 years as a hair colorist in top salons in New York and in Westchester. And I loved it. It was great to have an area of expertise, but I found the, re the thing that drew me most was the relationships with the people in my chair. And the thing that intrigued me the most was watching different people go through metamorphosis because we know people for years. And what made one, per there's the saying, as we grow older, we can become bitter or better. Yep. You saw a big difference between the, the choices that people made. Sure. And I, yes. And I wanted to support people to continue to grow and be better. So I became a life coach. And awesome. if these are the conversations I have the rest of my life, I will be so sated. <laughs> it's great. It's great because I've, you know, I've, I, I, you know, I've had so many conversations with you that are just, they're fantastic. And they're, they're, I walk away always feeling, you know, I can work on something or I feel better about myself. So you're, you're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I just see so much in people. That's the, you know, thank you. I have a, an extraordinary bandwidth to be with extremes. And I've noticed I have extremes in my life in relationships. So mm -hmm. I have, you know, I've worked with the wealthiest people taking care of their hair. I have friends who may not pay rent this month. I have family from different cultures. And I just, I think that's been, I didn't understand why I drew so many wild experiences to me, but now, <laughs> that's been my research. That's, that's amazing. And you know what, you also, one thing I noticed, and I, I think we share this, we both have a lot of patience, you know, and I think that's really helpful. And also, I'd say one other thing, if you don't mind me saying that, uh, comparing ourselves. And I think, I think we both have a tremendous curiosity for people. Absolutely. I want everyone's story all the time. Like I just, <laughs> what makes them tick? <laughs> right, right. Which makes you a good life coach because you're getting to the essence of things. Is that correct? I, I, I like to think so. Yes. It's, it is wonderful to be in impactful conversations. I, I almost can't tolerate what's for lunch anymore. Do you know, I just, <laughs> I know, I know, I know it's, um, it, but you know, what's amazing. So like, can you explain quickly what's a life coach? Cause there's so many people. And, and the thing is, is I know if you could explain about kind of who you, who you like to work with the most. Cause I think that's what makes you a little bit unique. Oh, thank you. Well, the, the, the umbrella is transition. So one thing that coaches are really great at is help supporting people in transitioning from what they already know to what they imagine it could be. Yeah. And then helping people to distinguish what is missing between point A, where you are, and point B, the dream that you have. That's the area of coaching. The people I've fine-tuned my coaching for are men. And I want to say one thing, ever since I declared that I like to coach men, they, I think they feel like I'm doing this to them, right? So actually more women will come forward now because they feel they're off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> that is very funny. Isn't that funny? Um, it's really funny. But I also say to men, look, I've been in the ear and, and spirit of women for 30 years. I could support you in your relationships as you transition. It makes sense. It makes a complete sense. And tell me, do you, did you, I think you went, went to school for this, correct? 
I did. I went to a great school in uh, New York City. We met every month. We spent a year being trained and it was so much more intensive than I expected. And I am going to admit something. I went in thinking I already knew a lot because I studied so many of the thought leaders and coaching and motivational speakers. So I actually thought, oh, I just, I just need to get certified. I get this. Uh, they call you out. I was, I was, you, they, they make sure everyone leaves extraordinarily vulnerable and with an increased bandwidth for every conversation. So I'm so grateful that I went through such a program. That's interesting. So that makes, so you can say like, I'm a certified life coach, correct? Yes, I, I can. And I do. <laughs> and, and there's, there's, and, a, there's one thing I want to say. I, I think there are lots of natural coaches out there, but again, if you don't have somebody calling, like I continue with a coach, a coach must be coached in my opinion, because if I'm not continuing to make myself really uncomfortable and growing my edge, then I, I'm not doing your job, right? Yeah. That's amazing. Well, you know what? There's so much uncertainty right now. So can you help me uh, help other people by kind of going through these priorities that you were talking about? Because I think that, you know, we, if we could learn, you know, a few things today to help us make it through or to the next level, I think that would be great. Yes, this is a little snapshot. And, and just for the audience to know, this is not, we're not going to do a super deep dive on Tina right Thank now. God. <laughs> but I don't want to do that. It's a snapshot into a conversation I like to have even before the world turned upside down. Right. I think healthy priorities are so important, but right now there it's an essential conversation to have. And I'd like people to take this home to their loved ones and have this conversation with everybody in their life. So that's my challenge and action for people to take. Great. And so we can also put a link to, uh, to what your, to, to your contact and all of the information and some of the things that we're going to be, the thing that we're going to be sharing, you'll be able to put some kind of link, I think, and, and put that in the content on the content, uh, our, our uh, description of the YouTube video that uh, we're going to put together. Thank so you. just to let everybody know that. Okay. Do, would you like to share, should I share, share the screen? And so we, I shared with Tina, uh, what the way people who are living fully actualized lives claim to prioritize the challenges in their own lives. So for instance, if you have, somebody like if we were to interview buddha as opposed to a mother with toddlers who are is in a one bedroom apartment they might have very different answers to this healthy priorities and how we how we classify what comes first to, to what comes fifth mm -hmm. but this is a great conversation for anyone wherever they are i would like tina to share a little bit about how did she rank from one to five family friends work that is meaningful, spouse if applicable, and I mean, spouse if applicable, and self, mind, body, spirit. How do you rank these at this moment in your life? Um, well, I'd have to say, it's hard for me to say uh, one over the other when it comes to friends and family and spouse. So I think I would say uh, family, spouse, one, uh, friends, two, um, work, three, and then I, you know, then self, mind, body, spirit would be last, unfortunately, but. Well, and there's no judgment. Two things I, I want to make sure now, of course, we're not having a confidential conversation right now, but when I have this conversation with people, it's confidential. We don't, it, it goes, it stays in the vault. Yep. And the other part of this is I want you, I want to invite you to imagine that there's no make wrong. We are where we are for many different radical challenges. So the invitation though is to look at if you were to truly have a serene and joyful life, the order of people who say they live that 90% of the time would be self one, the mind, body, spirit, spouse, if applicable, third would be work is, that is meaningful, then family and then friends. Wow, yeah. 
Yeah. That's interesting. And I, and I would like you just to reflect, how does, how does that land for you? No, you know what? I could actually, I could, I could imagine <laughs> what that would be, um, what that would be like, you know, not being able to achieve that right now, but, but I could imagine that, yes, I mean, you have to put your own oxygen mask on first, right? Yeah. You know, as they say. So it's like you do need to take it. And it's funny that mine comes last. Isn't that funny? Well, and, and this would be, I think, even people who had it in a different order two months ago may relate to the order you have right now, right? Like right. it shifts depending on the radical challenges. That's true. So the invitation in this also is that, of course, imagine about sailboat on calm seas going toward an island it's going to sail unfurled mast and the sails will be glorious and the people are all relaxed on deck if a hurricane comes they're going to sail very differently it's going to be bringing the sails everyone under deck the invitation is to really look at when the storm is over are you still are you still living life as if you're in an emergency Right. That's very important. Yeah. I can see it now. I mean, I can see people, you know, that are, you know, that I'm around now at this point, really isolating themselves and really upset and watching the news constantly and looking for numbers. And I'm just like, just, I'm not saying that you, you've got to be aware and you've got to be thinking about all of us you know, that are going through something and people are losing family members. And so I'm not saying that, but if you, if you can, it's to try to, you know, for right now, day by day, moving forward. Right, exactly. And by the way, if, if you have a moment, we talked a little bit about how life was for you 25 years ago. Oh, yes. Before You're, children. <laughs> yes, we got children and sports and <laughs> corporate job. You know, the thing that, the the, I was, self was definitely much higher on my list, which I thought was really interesting. Let's say 25, 30 years ago, self was definitely, oh, let's, you know, let's take that, uh, that weekend in um, skiing or, you know, go to the, uh, you know, go to the islands for a vacation. So it was much more, you know, work was last because I also didn't like what I did. Mm -hmm. You know, so I found, you know, I've since found my calling. So, and as, as you said, it was mean, like, this is more meaningful what I'm doing now. So that moved it up. So it's really interesting how that does. And maybe it's something to think about if people are finding that their work isn't meaningful. I mean, so many people are out of work, but they may think about, you know, going for a different, um, you know, industry or something like that. Now, after we all get back, something to think about. That's true. And something to do in the moment is also, yes, you're, this is a pivotal moment. The other thing is because so many people found themselves at the bottom right now of the list. Can you think of anything that you could do if you're open? Are you open? Oh, yeah. Okay. Is there anything you could do? Like, I'll ask you a quick question. Do you make, do you have a, a surefire method of laughing every day? Um, yes, by being on these Zoom meetings makes me laugh. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing the whole time. Good. Yes, and so the other thing I find that people, I'm going to share, by the way, I'm not going to just keep it about you. When I took this, when my mentor shared this with me, I was at the bottom, and I was extremely resistant to this list. I, I really wanted to defend my position of fifth fifth place. There were so many right. reasons. Yeah. And my mentor said, I'm so glad because if you're not resistant, there's nothing to coach. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, and you're not resistant, you get it. And there's still area to coach, but there's just no wrong response. There's no wrong answer. It's just, that's what I love about coaching. There's no right or wrong. It's just what is, is, is there space to create something that, allows for more meaning, more health and wellness, because you are a tremendous leader. And I say this to all the tremendous leaders. Well, to you and to the others that I know are attracted to your circle, it, you, there's a, you can't run roughshod on yourself. 
like if you, it's not sustainable. That would be the only judgment I would make is. Right. I think that's really key. I, I think that's, that is the whole, that you had it there, like in a nutshell, sustainable. Yeah. Is it sustainable? Is it sustainable? And that's what is coachable. So the other possibility is, I mean, the things to look at when, when we are at fifth place is, are you, are you attending to your sleep? I'm going to share something. I had to um, tell my husband that he checks his computer at 3 a.m. and it wakes me up. And that has made my morning routine off. And I really want to be true to myself in this period of time because I am not the most organized person. Mm -hmm. And I had to have a really tough talk with him that if he's checking stocks at 3 a.m., it can't happen near me. Right, right, for your own good, yeah. And I slept like a baby last night. Oh, good. So it was looking at where do I need support? What does support look like? And do I turn asking to? for it, not expecting the person's going to read your mind. That's right. I could have kept going for a week until I was so mad I screamed at him at 3 a.m. But yeah. I, now I have the, the capacity to look at what support do I need. I probably need more support than I think I do. And that would be the, my request for people to look at as an action step. Distinguish what does support look like in your life and invite it in. Like you mentioned people isolating. It's of concern to me. I'm going to just stop sharing so we can uh, do face to face. Okay, great. Thank you. So, um, so anyway, I didn't want you to finish. Your, uh, you stop thinking, you know, stop speaking. I just wanted, I just wanted it to be face to face. It's just of concern to me that people are isolating, not looking for support. Like you and I having this conversation today. Now I can check in on you with your permission. Oh that, yeah. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> are you making yourself a priority? Yes. Just remind you, what, what could you shift today? What's a 10 minute action you could take to take care of yourself? Even if it's running out in your yard and screaming, even if that's except, what feels Except good. the neighbors are around now. Oh, all right. Maybe we'll come up with some exercise to help. Go, go in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be my solution. Just, just showing like, how can you expand space for yourself, no matter the radical circumstances and challenges. That's a really good, and so, you know, I've had other conversations. I had uh, Jill Ortiz on a Lunch and Learn, and she was talking about creating a morning routine. So that we've had, I had Teresa Cavalli talking about how to work from home, you know, um, you know, you know how, to, how to create that space for yourself uh, now that you're working at home. So we have all these great, you know, ideas and all of that, but sometimes, you know, it's just the one you're not thinking of. It, or, you know, it's, it's not realizing that you're prioritizing everybody else in front of yourself. Well, Tina, I love that you mentioned those two because I just did Jill's beach body workout this morning because she's my exercise coach and I was MIA. And Teresa, I went to her, um, her webinar. Activity. Yes, because I need support. I've never worked at home before. I've never had un chart unplanned time since it was 15 years old oh wow this is me partnering with other people looking for more support than i think i needed right so let me ask you something in the the, the last couple of minutes that we have together um what's an, what's the next step if somebody wanted to you know uh talk to you about this what do they do right i would love for them to get a hold of me on the my information uh mkm T-R-O-Y at gmail.com. I would like them to, all I'm asking is to have an impactful conversation with them. I, I'd like to have this conversation with them or another one I can dance in the moment, whatever it is that, like there's another saying, not to be too, <laughs> too coachy, but until you distinguish the breakdown, you can't usher in the breakthrough. So while we circle whatever it is that has us stuck, we're just going to keep circling like a, I don't know, pants on fire. So yeah. I'd love to help people. I'll say the thing and support them <laughs> looking at what support looks like. That's and it's great. happy for me. But that's great. And you know what? I think you, I mean, I feel, and I know a lot of other people in our, in our, um, you know, organization think that you've, you've found your calling. Oh, thank you. I mean, without a doubt. I mean, if there's anybody that I, you know, know that are, is, 
you know, doing what you do is, is that you've found your calling. And it's interesting. So many people will want to work with women, you know, but yet you're like, no, nope, I, I'm, I'm good. I want to take on, you know, what, what men need. And I think that's, you know, that's so necessary during this time because we can support each other and we do quite often as women, but I think the men are, you know, they're not, they're not realizing that they need to, to maybe talk to somebody. I'm very concerned about men. Thank yeah. you. And by the way, men have been so supportive in my life. Men, it's, it's really a, a payback or a pay forward because I've received tremendous support. I had, I love conversations with men. They are willing to speak if we stop and let them. Yes. They, are. they have so much to say. That's funny. <laughs> they can be if you just just speak through a little bit. I know. Um, it's 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 very interesting. Right, it goes back to all the relationships in our lives. So I just want to thank you so much for for coming and speaking with me and and to get this out and this message that you know uh, men and women right now need to you know make sure they're making themselves a priority um, so that they don't. Um, don't get burnt out and um, can move forward. And I guess, cause you really can, unless you, and I'm realizing this, I'm, I, I'm just kind of reiterating what you're saying in order to make sure I'm getting the, getting the uh, message. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for this time. And I love the support you give me. You're always in my corner. Thank you. I think of you as the support <laughs> in my life. I'm a pillar. <laughs> That's how I needed until I met you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, dear. Thank you so much. I'm